In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, bless us. Amen. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and at all time, and unto the ages of all ages. Amen. Um, while we're getting all the technical part uh, on, uh, thank you, Abunas, for having me. Thank you, um, you as a congregation, to, to have me. It's an honor for me to come uh, to St. Mary and St. Joseph Church. Um, I used to come as a layman here, uh, me and my wife and, uh, and my kids. Uh, So, so I am blessed um, to, to be among you. Uh, many blessings for St. Mary Revivals. And I think um, you guys are very fortunate. Thank you, Abuna. You guys are very fortunate because um, you belong to a church with the name of St. Mary and St. Joseph. Um, having the intercess intercession of St. Mary and St. Joseph, it's um, two of the great saints where they were serving our Lord in all humility and silence. And uh, absolve me, fathers, but when I, when I look at your blessed father, Abuna Abraham and Abuna Yusuf and Abuna Shnuda, um, I think that kind of summarizes uh, their attribute, the three of them really serving you in humility and in silence. So I hope, um, I'm the rookie here, so I hope one day I can really learn from them. Uh, they are blessed father and they're very uh, dear to me. So thank you, Abuna, for having me. Um, I thought to meditate to you, with you today about something that we, we tend to forget most of the time because we're so busy. We are busy with our life. We are busy focusing on so many things other than the real stuff. And I, I like to always remind you about, you know, the definition of busy. The word busy, it's B-U-S-Y. It's being used by Satan's yoke. This is how we live our life because we're continuously busy with our daily routine, our daily tasks. We're focusing on so many things except something that is very important that we want to meditate on today. It's my brand. So for the people that are in business, and you guys can, can teach me a lot about that part of the marketing, but for any company or any successful company need to have a brand on the market so they are known about what they are able to offer. A brand, it's something that distinguishes them among the competition or on the market. And if we look at for example, one of the scenes that we, we are celebrating her for the next two weeks or for the, for the next couple of days, it's St. Mary. And when we look at her brand, we can right away think about a couple of ways to distinguish her. The mother of God, the mother of the holy, salvation of our father Adam, the true virgin, humility, you know, serving God, obedience, unchanging crown, happiness for, you know, all generation. So we know St. Mary by her brand. We tend to focus on the brand after death. Like if you look at it, the moment that you start discussing the brand of someone, it's usually either during the funeral or when we hear that they past or after when we're gathering and you're like, yeah, this person was amazing. He was kind. He was this. She was that. Right? But while we're living, we don't focus that much about our brand. And if we look at our brand, and I would, I would have loved to, you know, to play that game if you're able to see on the screen, but if I give you a logo you probably would be able to recognize that company and even think about the motto. So, for example, if I look at Apple, you look at, you know, the motto is think different. 
If I give you the sign of McDonald, everybody is going to say, I'm loving it. Hopefully, you're going to love it starting Saturday, not until Friday. But you know right away the motto is, I'm loving it. If you look at Walmart, it's save money, live better. If you look at Nike, just do it. If you look at L'Oréal Paris, because you are worth it. When you look at those companies, you think about those motto because they establish themselves in the market as being competitive only because if you go to Walmart, you will be able to live better while saving money. So it's a quality and you're going to be saving, saving money while having the quality to live better. So at the end of the day, we have to have a brand. And our brand or our identity should always be in Christ. But how am I going to have that kind of brand? When you're discussing a brand, you look at what is your visual identity. Our visual identity should always go back to that first, you know, the verse in the book of Genesis chapter 1, verse 27. And it says, so God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them male and female. He created them. He created them beautifully. He created Adam and Eve not conforming to this world. So our visual identity should not be conforming to this world or to the standard of this society and this world. Look at us now. Our visual identity should always have the smile on our face. Why? Because confidently we know that we are the children of God. Regardless, we have put some pounds on or off. Regardless if we are tall, we are, you know, handsome, we are beautiful, we are, you know, matching the standards of this society or not. It does not matter. The visual identity there was a, a beautiful quote for Pope Shenouda when people used to ask him, why are you always smiley? He used to answer them saying, I would be ashamed not to have a smile on my face knowing that my Father in heaven have everything, all my issues and all my problem, and he's taking care of it. So that's why he always, his visual identity his brand, Pope Shenouda, was he is a smiley man. Regardless of all the tribulation and the trials that he probably went through and all the hardship that he went through, we all know that he was also very sick. But still, he had that smile. Why? Because it's the visual identity. It's his identity in Christ. Now, for us, how can I have, you know, like the smile on my face? How can I have the smile on my face even while I am having an argument or in a disagreement with my co-worker or with my fellow student in university or at home with my parents or my spouse or my kids, how can I have that visual identity, the smile on my face? If we, go, if we follow what St. Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, he said, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Why do I need to have my smile on my face? Because I know that after the fall, the whole journey of salvation through St. Mary, the salvation of our father Adam, all that happens for you and for me because he wants us. He wanted to take care of us. He would say that he created the whole world. But he knew that this world would not be complete without you and me in it. Each one, by his name and by her name. So I should have that smile on my face, and it should be my, my identity, because I am confident in that. That someone is taking care of me. And that someone is the Father in heaven is the Pantocrator, the creator of heaven and earth, and all that is therein. That's why I need to have the smile on my face. Sometimes we fall into that trap saying, you know, if I need to be Christian, or if I need to be focusing on my spiritual life, I don't have to pay attention to, you know, how I'm being dressed, or am I taking care of myself or my physique, and, you know, 
I'm going to the gym or not. It's wrong because God blessed everything when he took the form of a man. He blessed my body and your body. He blessed the appearance. Everything is important, but it should not be the priority number one. It depends on how you're looking at your body. You're, you're looking at your body as the temple of God. Yes, that's great, and we need to take care of our body and our appearance, but it should not be the priority number one. My visual identity should be more me be, being confident in him taking care of me so I should not be having any worries and have this smile on my face constantly. You know, the voice also is a part, the voice that I use is a part of my identity. If you look uh, at us as Christian, we should have that soft voice speaking to everybody. The tongue, as in the book of Proverbs, chapter 18, verse 21, it says, death and life are in the power of the tongue. And those who love it will eat its fruit. Our mouth and every single word that comes out of our mouth, it's extremely important. Before we speak as our Christian identity, we should always think, what am I going to say? Is it going to build or it's going to demolish? It's going to lift someone or it's going to beat them down? Sometimes we have argument with our parents, with our family, with our kids, and we say words that we cannot retract back. We can harm people in front of us. Where is my identity? You know, where is my brand? And sometimes we don't say the word, but we say them in our mind. Almost the same thing. If you did you know, think it, and you did not say it's great because you controlled yourself, but you still thought of it. So let's try to control or have that soft voice. When we ha are having an argument, you know, with our parents, you know, sometimes we, we're coming back from school and we have an argument with our parents, and, you know, we go and we start raising our voices and We've tried to find who is going to raise the voice better so that we win the argument, or who's going to slam the door harder so that we can win the argument or understand that I'm hurt more. We keep on, you know, using hard words, tough words for our kids, for our parents, for our spouses. And I look, where is my identity? Is really my, my identity is in Christ? I had one time a, a, a quick story. I was in, uh, in Walmart with my two boys. They're young. Um, and, you know, we're just waiting, obviously, for mommy to finish. Um, and at some point at, like, the cashier, someone was having, I guess, an argument or, you know. And you could hear, like, the voices going higher and higher and higher. And obviously, my kids are, like, extremely, you know, observant. And it's like, what's going on, right? Very curious. And at some point, like, my youngest looked at me and he's like, do you think I should go tell him, like, what would Jesus do? Because I always tell them about what would Jesus do. But some day, they give, they give us that lesson, right? He's like, oh, should I give him, like, that what would Jesus do so maybe I can help him, right? And then it reminded me at that time how the kids really take what would Jesus do, you know, to the point, like, on the spot. And they really try, but when it comes to us as adults, we don't. We don't really ask. We all know it, but we don't ask ourselves this question at the moment, at the heat of the moment. So when it comes to my voice and my word, what is my identity? A soft answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. In Proverbs chapter 15, verse 1. And in Colossians chapter 4, verse 6, we all know it. Let your speech always be with grace, seasoned with salt. And I like the word seasoned, because seasoned, we should be, every word comes out of our mouth should be seasoned, should bring flavor to the conversation, 
do not conform to this world. At work, if we're having a disagreement, it's okay. It's, it's okay to agree to disagree. But with a soft voice, with a calm spirit, that it should be my identity. Also, when we have a brand as a business, you also have a value, the value of your business. You know, when you look at like the PNL, the financial statement, you have a value for that business. The value of this business for me as a Christian, for my identity, should be the talent that God gave me and if I am using it or not. Like St. Paul says, having gifts that differ according to the grace gift to us, let us use them. If prophecy, if knowledge, if teaching, whatever talent you have, let's use it. Don't take it for granted that you just have a talent and you're looking and focusing on using this talent only to have a successful life on earth. Successful life on earth, it's great. But are you prioritizing also your success and you're guaranteeing yourself a place in heaven or not? As each one has received a gift, minister it to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. In the first epistle of St. Peter, chapter 4, verse 10, we need to remember for us, our identity, not only the smile on my face, the soft voice that I speak with, but also what I am bringing to the table to the people around me. What is my talent? If my talent is patience, let's try to help people being patient around us at home or at work. If your talent is your voice, use it. Sing. Help a church. If your talent is to teach, make sure you bring your knowledge and ask your father of confession to help. Teach the kids. Make sure you use your talent. Don't keep your talent for yourself only. God will come and will judge us all on what he gave us because at the end of the day, he wanted to use you and me as a tool or a vessel for the glorification of his name. You know, if, if you remember the, 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 the miracle when he got the news that Lazarus is sick and about to die, how many days did he wait before going to see him? Two days. And if you think about it, it's like he, 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 he loved the three of them. He loved. It says in the, in, in the gospel that he loved them. So how come he did not like run to go and save him? Because he knew that he would save him regardless. But it's for the glorification. He had to go through all that because he wanted to use Lazarus as a vessel and a tool for the glorification of his name. And that's the same for us. So the talent is to be used. And last but not least is the kind of impact that we have on the market like any company that have a brand. Us with our identity in Christ, the value that we have or the impact that we have, it's two words, salt, and light salt and light you all the you are the salt of the earth and the light of the world that's the only impact that we should focus on and always be the light and the salt for the people around us in every situation we are put in we have to be the salt and the light not only when we say what will jesus do but always think what am i going to do right now is it salt to season that situation and to make it better? And am I going to be the light for the people around me? Are they going to see my reaction and it's going to be the light for them? Or it will bring them darkness. It will bring them sadness. It will bring them a blend life with no flavor in it. And I will leave you with... 
a couple of, of one last verse and a couple of quotes in the first epistle of St. Peter, chapter 2, verse 9. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. That's our identity in Christ. We are chosen. We are holy nation. We had, we were created in a holy state and then we got corrupted, but he did not want to leave us corrupted. So he wanted to bring us back to that holy state and finally give us this identity. So let's not waste it. Let's not just put our identity on the side and have an identity, you know, a in Christ only Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday to Friday, it's a different identity. Or in the street, it's a different identity. Or at school, or in university, or at home. Let's have that identity in Christ. If we don't discover our identity, worth, and purpose in God through Jesus, we will find and worship a substitute God. And that's what happens in our society, in our world. If we don't know the worth, of the identity in Christ that we can have and we can make a difference, we are going after money. We are going after beauty. We are going after success. And we are going after positions. We are going after a substitute, God. We're not going after the real thing. We're not going after him because we did not taste him yet. Life isn't about finding yourself. It is about discovering who God created you to be. And I'm going to leave you with the last verse in Jeremiah 29, 11. It says, I have plans for you, says the Lord, plans to prosper, not to harm, plans for hope and a life. God created us with a plan and with a purpose. And Finding ourselves, it's actually finding our plan and the purpose in God's eyes, in His plan, His purpose for us, so that we are able to use our identity to glorify His name. Glory be to God forever and ever. Amen.